Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we have the 2020 Honda Ridgeline. Off-road this thing's pretty smooth. So I haven't mounted the camera up there on very many vehicles before. So hopefully it gets a better view. You can see how much it's shaking rather than when it's in my arm. My arm kind of stabilizes it a little bit when I'm holding it. Whereas this, you'll get the full shake. Um, this vehicle has pretty low ground clearance, but fully independent suspension uh, does help it off-road. I don't see any downhill assist or anything, um, so you don't get that helping you out much. It's a little steep. Um, the nine-speed transmission is definitely a big improvement over the previous generation. I believe my family car has a five-speed. It's a Honda Pilot. Uh, the 2012 with a five speed and uh, it did struggle a little bit more up here doing the really steep stuff it actually on the steepest climb it wasn't able to do it even with all four wheels having good traction from a stop it just couldn't accelerate up the hill um, nine the nine speed has a lot lower first gear and there is a little bit more power involved which makes it a little bit better so i mean the power is it's still a 3.5 liter engine, but they've updated it, the V6, 3.5 V6. Um, I can pick up the speed a little bit here. Uh, like I said, this car doesn't have the best ground clearance. It doesn't have off-road tires. It's not an off-road vehicle, and it's not a car. Like I said, it's a truck, but as far as mid-size trucks go, um, this thing is wider. It's super wide and super smooth. Um, there are Others, all the other midsize have solid rear axles and I believe every single one of them has independent front suspension. So this one has independent all around, which does make it a little bit smoother. It's just not as off-road capable as the others are. But for doing roads like this, think Subaru. So if you're doing roads that a Subaru would do, this thing will do it. Um, it uh, can tow 5,000 pounds, so you can tow your little tiny camp trailer. Maybe the last few miles of your trek are on a dirt road, and you don't have to worry about it. This thing can handle that. Um, if you're doing serious off-roading, check out the Ranger FX4. The ZR2, of course, is a crazy one in the midsize. And then the, the Tacomas, you have however many variants. The TRD Off-Road and the TRD Pros have the uh, crawl control and the multi-terrain select and all that kind of stuff so this one doesn't have all those features it does have a, a little bit but basically they've gotten rid of the ivtm4 button uh, that they used to have you push that button and it locks it so basically you have the there is no center differential and no rear differential in the standard idea of it um, and so when you push that IVTM4 lock button, it would essentially lock the center and rear differentials. Um, it's through a clutch pack system. We're coming up to our articulation hill and it does have four drive modes, normal, snow, mud, and sand. So those are the four different drive modes and we'll test them all out and see how it changes the traction system and go from there. So the biggest change we noticed in snow mode was how much more throttle needed to be applied to get to the power. It just seemed like it reduced the throttle sensitivity, which it should, to give you better traction on really slippery surfaces. So 
So putting it into mud mode reduces the traction control input. It doesn't turn it off entirely, but it does basically just turn it down and allow for more wheel spin. Just like mud mode, when you put it into sand mode, it puts up a display that says traction control reduced or stability control reduced and should allow for more wheel spin, but as you can see, there's still pretty limited amount of wheel spin. Despite not having a great breakover angle, it's so stiff and able to lift a wheel easily enough that you can make this without high centering. Ground clearance is listed as 7.9. I put the camera in a bad spot, so it does take a small hit here, but still 7.9 inches isn't a lot of ground clearance. And you can see it is kind of protected underneath in some areas and open in others. All right, so we'll go through the different modes here real quick. First one's snow. Now you can see there's that little truck here with the snow mode. Next one, mud. And you see the traction control light pop on and reduced stability control and the mud underneath the little truck there and then the sand. And again, stability reduced and the traction control lights off and then back to normal. So the left and right views were shot at different times so they're not gonna line up perfectly but it gives you an idea of what each side is doing. So as you can see here, it took a lot of throttle to do it, but it was able to make it up this hill and with two wheels basically in the air. Other vehicles haven't been able to do this and the older generation of the same system was unable to do this. So same thing as before with the snow mode, the throttle is just less sensitive and it required me to do full throttle, but the other modes required full throttle too. This one just took a little bit longer to get up to speed. In mud mode, it seemed like the throttle was even more sensitive than normal mode and it took less effort or less throttle input in order to make it up the hill. It felt like sand mode allowed for more wheel spin, but the difference was negligible and I don't know if these results are conclusive. On their own, the clutches in the rear differential don't apply enough pressure to fully lock the differential together. So you can see here without traction control on, the wheels just spin. And this is bad for the clutches as well because it causes a lot more friction in there, caused them to heat up more, and it did overheat the system. You can see the traction control light flashes there. Even with it off, you get that traction control light flashing. And there you go. Stop driving when safe, the all-wheel drive mode is too hot so we'll go down let it cool off and then we'll do one last crest up that hill because it can do it we'll get the video from the top so you can just see it go all the way up the hill and then we'll call it a day Here you can see the low ground clearance and the poor breakover angle. Make it so it just touches. Of course there was no damage or anything, but it did just barely touch there. All right, thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of the 2020 Honda Ridgeline. We worked this thing pretty hard. We climbed the hill multiple times. Finally got the all-wheel drive system to to be too hot so it's currently cooling off you can hear those fans blowing like crazy but this new nine speed auto and updated ivtm is well are great together so they 
are able to climb this hill no problem and like I said it's about a uh, 67 68 percent grade so it's pretty steep um, I, I guess I shouldn't say no problem but it does make it up this pretty easy Subaru was not able to the RAV4 did end up overheating and didn't have enough torque to make it up this uh, on the hard line on the easy line it could do it same with the Subaru it made it on the easy line but not the hard line um, overall it's not a hardcore off-roader but I think a lot of people will be surprised at how capable it is and how much you're able to do with it. I mean, look at the ground clearance. There's not very much there. And it's got road tires. It gets 23 miles per gallon. It's just a big mid-size truck that is more of a city car doing home repairs and stuff like that. Uh, you can tow some really light loads, you know, up to 5,000 pounds, um, small travel trailers and stuff like that, and should be just fine and be fuel efficient. And Tonda, you should have pretty good long-term durability with it. And overall, just a great vehicle. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, ring the bell for more notifications when we post stuff, and uh, make sure to comment below with any questions you have.